The story of Ghost of Tsushima is a very basic and not very complicated samurai story. There's not many twists and turns and any that do happen you can see coming a mile off. But it is presented in such a fantastic way and with such care and the characters are so likeable that it is still a great and enjoyable story. Jin is a very good protagonist and I enjoyed my time with him. It starts off mega with a massive battle set piece that really gets you going and then after that the world opens up and you can take it at whatever pace you want. You can blast through the main story in about 30 hours if you ignore all the side missions and distractions. I found that quite difficult to do but there you go. One of the main downs though through the story is that I found the main villain to be a bit generic and he didn't really do much after turning up at the beginning of the game. He tended to turn up at the end of an act to do something to advance the story and just to let you know that he's still there. He gets a bit more compelling after the second act but he will not be going into the pantheon of great video game villains. That's only a minor gripe though, there's some really cool big set piece story moments and the way it's structured means you're never doing too much of the same thing at one time and the story has time to breathe. There's some really nice quiet emotional moments as well, as I've said Jin is a very good protagonist and his struggles between maintaining the honour, the ways of the samurai and not going against what his uncle has taught him and becoming the ghost plays out really well. The mythical side missions are really fun and enjoyable and add to the lore of the game as does all the other side stories as well and the boss battles in the story are amazing and go into an almost Dark Souls style of gameplay. The missions that form the story and the side missions are pretty great too, they're not amazing. There's probably maybe a bit too many follow these footsteps, follow this person, search this camp, like stalk this person and find clues. There's a bit too much of that to be honest. Overall though, the missions and tales serve the story well and all of the side missions help flesh out the characters and the lore of Tsushima as I've said. It's all about becoming the ghost at the end of the day and building your legends through your actions. There's so much to unpack with the gameplay, there's so much to do and there's so many different ways to approach it but to start off with it can be a bit overwhelming. I'm going to start with the combat here which is definitely a cross between old Assassin's Creed games and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. You can be a one man wrecking crew when you level up enough but if there's too many enemies then you can get taken down quite easily. There's a really nice learning curve but sometimes there can be a random difficulty spike when it comes to bosses and that made me go into full on souls mode and unfortunately for me I played it too much like Bloodborne slash Dark Souls to begin with. I was rolling around too much rather than blocking and parrying. Perfectly timing a parry and unleashing a killing blow is amazing. Dodging at like the perfect moment and unleashing a counter attack is great and it never gets old. You also have four stances that help take down specific types of enemies. You have a bow and arrow, other side weapons and you can take part in 10 standoffs when you have to make the right moves at the right time. There's also ghost stance that allows you to one shot enemies for a limited time and that is amazing. So the combat although the same throughout never gets boring as you have so many options and this is even without going into the stealth. The stealth is probably some of the best stealth I've played in recent years, probably the best since Metal Gear Solid 5. There is again lots of ways to approach this and items and weapons to help you out and if it does go tits up then you can easily transition into the normal combat. Outside of the combat, you will be spending a lot of time on your horse that can be called to you at a press of a button. Over the last 5-10 to 10 years, horse gameplay has vastly improved and the same can be said for this game. There's just so much to do in this world and once you get the grappling hook it opens up even more. There's some great side quests and the world is so easy to explore. You have little mini games like bamboo cutting to distract you and there's just tons of collectibles. It does sort of follow the Ubisoft way of the open world with bases and camps to take down but it still feels relatively new in this different setting. In all honesty, it does take a while to fully grasp everything but once you do it's such a rewarding and enjoyable experience. My first impression was that it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be but as I played it more and more it started to live up to the hype. 
It's got some nice basic RPG style elements in the way you upgrade, but it's nothing too mega and you unlock everything eventually. You can also customise your armour with dyes and mix and match your armour. It's a nice level of customisation, but nothing too complex. The Island of Tsushima is really the style of the show here. It's absolutely beautiful and it's just full of life and it always seems to have another surprise up its sleeve. You'll just be riding along to then be taken aback by some amazing vista and, and just some epic scenery. One of my favourite sights in the game is just the amazing fields of flowers of different colours. It just feels so right for this game. As I said earlier, the presentation is just spot on and ripped straight out of the best samurai movies. This world is also full of creatures like foxes and birds to guide you to your next objective, along with the wind. This allows for a minimal HUD and that really allows you to immerse yourself into this beautiful world. To contrast the beauty, the destruction is also amazing with burnt villages and fields of death. They are just a shock to behold and graphically, while not the best looking game on PlayStation, PlayStation 4, it's definitely top 10. The music and score is also stunning and this just knocks the presentation up just a few more levels. I have really enjoyed my time with Ghost of Tsushima and it takes a lot of old ideas and makes them feel really new by presenting them in an amazing way. Is this the absolute game changer that I and many of us thought it was going to be? No, I have just found it to be lacking somewhere and I just really can't put my finger on it. I think it just possibly needed a bit more innovation in the gameplay and the way the missions played out. There needs to be more variety in the missions, I think. And the fact that the story is a bit predictable maybe holds it back a little bit. As I said, I enjoyed this game the more and more I played it and I think I will enjoy doing all the side quests and getting all the collectibles and I'll probably enjoy that maybe even more than the main story. Not that the main story didn't have its moments. The combat and gameplay are good, I loved immersing myself in this world and this is where this game truly excels. Sucker Punch have built an amazing world which is just full of beauty, destruction and awesome characters. And this is the reason why Ghost of Tsushima is awarded a just good games.